Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstead. Every Wednesday, folks, at 9.40 a.m. Eastern Time, we talk to Teddy. Put it on your calendar. You can reach Teddy every trading day at his website, forex-trading-unlock.com. We talk a little bit of Forex. We talk a little bit of crude. We got some action in that dollar index, man. Teddy Kegstead, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Yeah, what a really weird week this is, I'll tell you what. Well, you know, it's... Uh, you're the you're you're the forex king, Teddy, and I'm jumping around. I always keep them on my radar, especially now, man, with where yields are going, right, where the mm -hmm. dollar is going, some of the moves in these forex markets. Um, but it's always interesting when I'm getting ready to talk to you on Wednesdays at 9:40, and I'm looking at the markets, especially, and I'm saying, man, there's some real moves going on in this market. Where do you want to kick things off? Uh, I think we should just kick things off by kind of walking through what's happened over the past couple of days. Uh, Let's do it. Uh, we had a nice little buy signal in the 30-year bond about a week ago. They've been trending higher for the past five sessions. And with the, what's weird with the Forex markets is, you know, interest rates are a function of currency pricing. So with interest rates going down right now, as far as the market rate is concerned with the rally, you would think that you would have dollar weakness. OK, you should have at least or at least a dollar correction right now. Sure. We would have been right to have a dollar sell off, meaning the dollar index most likely would have pulled back over the past few sessions. Instead, you have the euro hammering new lows. You have the pound that fell out of bed over the past few sessions, you know, and even the Swiss. The Swiss is the one that surprised me the most is how much that one has rallied over the past couple of sessions. You know, so the fact that we have these markets going it's not that they trade in tandem and always go in a certain fashion however they do support the trend and right now being in these toppy areas if you will or bottomy ish areas for them to diverge like that is a very 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 weird and odd circumstance right now it's hard to get a beat on it you know i mean obviously I think one of the biggest things you're seeing with the European uh, currencies as far as the Forex market is concerned is that, you know, sanctions on Russia are also sanctions on the EU and also on UK, you know. So the reality is, is that, you know, they're exporting countries and one of their biggest exports is to Russia. So now you have the UK and the, all of the EU that has cut themselves off from, you know, one of their biggest buyers. You know, so and I think you're starting to really see that as far as what currency traders are looking to as far as value. I mean, we were talking about that the euro has a potential to get down to parity sometime in the next, you know, I think it was two weeks ago we were talking about that, that it would take probably until the end of the summer because we're looking at <coughs> a conflict, excuse me, that's not going to end anytime soon. It's not going to happen on a dime. That's for sure. And right now, when you have between the, the COVID shutdowns that were first, then you open up and then all of a sudden you shut. I mean, there's factories that are shutting down all across Europe right now. Sure. You know, because they, who are they going to send product to? You know, yeah. so and that starts to that starts to implicate other supply chain issues and demand issues. You know, so we're coming into a world right now where you know, we've never gone through this kind of thing, not in our lifetimes, that's for sure. You know, and I think that these dynamics are starting to really show, you know, as far as the big economic numbers, you really have to watch those because the dollar shouldn't be as strong as it is right now. There's no reason for it. You know, I mean, strong, yes, but not like it is right now. I mean, if you look at the dollar index, that's because the euro, the pound, now the yen, this is the interesting one. We've been talking about the yen a lot right so the yen had a little pullback over the past two sessions and now it's bounced back today that was a very weird sell-off the way it was um, pounding on on support really you know while the other ones were falling out of bed because usually you have a, a, a divergence between which way the yen goes and the other ones are going you don't typically see them going the way they were working over the past two sessions. So the volatility is, I mean, we know that it's not going away and it's been here, but it's been very, very odd to get a, a hold of. And I think that you probably have seen, at least in the, on the retail end, I wouldn't doubt that a lot of bears and bulls got really chewed up over the past, I would say, from Sunday night until yesterday evening. You know, now I think the trends are solid. I still think the U.S. dollar yen is going to rally. You know, I think now the, the euro... We were talking, I think, a couple of weeks ago, I said you wouldn't see parity in the euro at least until the end of the summer, maybe the fall, because usually you find a lot of support around 107.5, 107 even. And the fact that we are just, I mean, it's like a lead weight, you know, yeah. so and, and I don't. I would not get in front of that momentum. I would look to sell rallies, you know, as far as yeah. that's concerned with the euro and the pound. You know, I would not try and be a buyer, even if you have a really great buy signal, I would let the signal manifest itself and then wait, look for weakness to come back in, you know, as long as the geopolitical, 
you know, stage remains the same. Just amazing moves, man, that you're, you know, mm-hmm. a year ago back, you're sitting at 122 in the Euro, basically, in May, mm-hmm. uh, and it's going to be May in, what, less than a week, and we're sitting at right. 105, man. Um, just remarkable. I was reading an article today over at Bloomberg, Teddy, and it was an opinion mm-hmm. article, but it was talking about rates, and it was talking about FANG stocks and the Euro, and one thing that caught my eye, thinking about talking to you, man, talking about rates, mm-hmm. talking about the dollar, is the widening gap with the rate expectations uh, are rising in the e- EU, but dwarfed by the U.S. change. And basically the chart here, I'm not sure if you can see it, but we got basically the expectation when you're talking about um, where we are just massively in terms of the U.S. versus the EU, the rate hikes. Do you see mm-hmm. that being a continual factor in this dollar index? And I totally agree with what you're saying. There should have mm-hmm. been a reprieve no matter what, right? I mean, if the, mm-hmm. if we get kind of that pullback in yields, um, mm-hmm. That should matter, and it's kind of been a little bit weird of how the dollar indexes keep charging higher. But mm-hmm. are you looking at, obviously, and you've taught me this somewhat over like the last five, I mean, we've been talking so many years, man. I was just thinking that the, and we'll jump to it, that the the Swiss parity is almost back, and that's what we were talking about when we first started chatting with you. Um, right. But do you look for where Europe goes versus where the U.S. goes, where the rate hikes are, in terms of at least for those two currencies, the euro US dollar, which how absolutely. do you look at that? Yeah, okay. absolutely, Tommy, I do for sure. And that's a gap that is widening. You very good observation that I don't see that trend stopping. I think that no matter what we were, the Fed was in a lag to begin with. We should have been raising rates already a few years ago, you know, so that we could cut rates right now yeah. and, and help to see. Got to raise in good times, yeah. man. Right. Totally. Correct. And when it comes to the EU, you got to remember that they were on quantitative, they're on what quantitative easing 20 or something like that. I mean, it's yes. just their packages are, you know, it's kind of like what we talked about with the Japanese, how they reverse course with the Bank of Japan. Um, you, you can't be buying up your debt market and then say you're going to raise rates. You know, those yields are going to be in a tug of war. And at least we know that we're cutting our purchasing on bonds and, and notes. We know that we're, I mean, as far as how many, where are we going to be a year from now? We know we're going to be at least two plus percent on the sure. uh, discount rate you know i mean that's it would be shocking if we weren't right. you know but hopefully we are the, right because that yes. means bad things yes. happen in them at least the market if we're not right i agree sure right right but with the ecb you know there it doesn't make any sense yeah. that they're staying so held fast on this i don't i don't understand especially with them putting the sanctions on russia um, they're they're burying their own currency. It's a you tough know, deal. they're doing yeah. they're doing everything to to trash their own value, which in the short run helps with exports, but it's going to hurt them in the long. It's run. a tough deal, man. Right? Inflation yeah. raging. They got a war bone on. They got commodity prices high. Uh, right. Teddy, can you stay with us to chat a little bit of crude for a second? You got a few sure. minutes. Okay, sure, perfect. We'll come back. I know we got listeners. They want to hear some crude conversation, man. We'll okay. be right back. We'll be talking Sounds to some crude good. folks. Stay tuned. Welcome back, folks. We got markets higher. You got the NASDAQ 100 right now up 1.3%. S&P's just coming above a percent to 42.15. Dow right now up to 8 tenths percent. We're on the phone. Uh, we're on the video with our man, Teddy Kegstad. We're going to talk a little Forex. So, Teddy, we got crude at 100. Uh, if the listeners have been watching, viewers watching for a while, they know you're a bull. I'm pretty sure you're probably going to be a bull um, <laughs> longer term. Uh, but we got about Two minutes right now. If you could walk mm-hmm. the viewers through what you're looking for in terms of what shapes this market in the near term versus the long term, if you are trying to trade this market, God bless you, man. But uh, talk to us about crude, Teddy. Uh, well, I would expect you see a rally coming up again over the next like week or so. I think that the, the coil has been winding, if you will. Um, we we hit some nice resistance and it definitely remember we've been talking about once you get crude oil up around $100 to 110 consumers are making choices we already know that that's definitely coming into play right now yes. and i i think that that trend is going to continue you know it's kind of funny how if you listen to the news you know like we know that the airlines are booking up all kinds of flights for the summer. Travel is definitely going to be increasing. OK, um, well, that's great for transportation stocks, but it doesn't mean that when people are traveling that they're going to be spending a lot of money because it's going to cost them a lot to travel, you know, and since people were contained for over, you know, two years in some cases, so people want to see their relatives. So they're making those choices for sure that they want to see people. So they're willing to, to travel. You know what I mean? But I don't think that that means it's going to be a boom to the economy because of that, you know, and I think that that's also going to wane, you know, and in the short run, it's going to drive up demand for sure. You know, and I think you have to look at the, what's going on in Shanghai too. this bottleneck, you know, what's going on with them. Yeah. What happens when 
Shanghai opens its doors? What happens when the factories go back on? You have all these ships, you know, that have built up around. I mean, I looked at a, at a map and I, I was of a picture. I think I saw that thing. same picture. I saw something like it. I know what you mean. All those ships out there, just like uh, little ant dots, right, sitting in the water. Right. Right. Yeah. It's almost it's almost like the country's expanding. You know, yeah. I mean, like as, if you look at it from a, from an aerial view. Sure. And, and I think that when that actually starts to come, it's, it's that's going to be a big deal when they come back online, you know, because what's going to be the demand for crude oil then, you know, for uh, for for the ships and stuff like that. So Not many to mention what's man. it going to be. Right. So I think that we're going to see in a month or so, two weeks, a, a big rally again. Teddy, man, we appreciate the time so much, man. You have a great week. We'll talk to you next you Wednesday, too. brother. Okay, Take care. thanks.